Hello friends, I hope all of you are doing great today. So in the previous session, we had started with the basic circuit of the DC separately excited motor and the DC shunt motor. And I have told you if the terminal voltage and the field voltage were constant, were the same value, the characteristics of the DC separately excited motor and the DC shunt motor are almost the similar. So today let us start with the terminal characteristics of the DC shunt motor. So before beginning, we have to learn what is the definition of terminal characteristic. So I'll just put it up that in words here. So what is the terminal characteristic? The definition is, it is the plot between the output parameters, the output parameters of the machine. Okay. So in our case, we have a DC motor. So let me just put a small diagram here. So this is your DC motor. All right. So this is your input side and this is your output side. Okay. So the input was electrical. You give electrical energy inside a DC motor and the output is a mechanical energy. Right. And what are the potential and kinetic variables here? Here it is the voltage and the current and here is the torque induced and the angular speed. So what is the terminal characteristic? It is the plot between the output parameters of the DC motor. So this is the output parameter. So this will be a plot between the induced torque and the angular speed. Okay. So I hope that is clear. The next thing is an intuitive understanding. An intuitive understanding is always important before doing all these derivations. So what is the intuitive understanding that you require here? See, when you are loading the motor, for example, let us take the example of a rice mill. Okay, in a rice mill, what happens when you load rice into the machine, the machine is loaded. That means the torque loaded becomes greater than the induced torque, right? So the motor slows down a bit and the induced torque increases to, uh, to fulfill the demand of the load torque and the motor slows down a little bit and then it settles down that speed and it continues rotation. Okay. So an intuitive understanding is that as the load torque increases, as the load torque increases, the speed decreases. Okay. Now the speed decreases and finally the induced torque becomes equal to the load torque at this reduced speed. So this is what is going to happen. So as the load increases, the torque induced also increases and the speed comes down a little bit. So basically a plot between induced torque and the load would be a drooping characteristic. So drooping characteristic in the sense, it would look something like this. So if this is the omega and this is the torque induced, it will have a drooping characteristic, something like this. But now next is the engineer's perspective. We are all engineers, right? So this type of intuitive understanding everybody can do. But what is the engineering understanding behind this? So for that, we have to go for a little bit of theory. So let's see what happens. For example, you are loading the motor. Okay. So this is the engineering understanding. Okay. So this is the engineering understanding. So all these equations here will be valued here now. Okay. So now you are loading the motor. The motor was working at some speed. And now you are loading the motor. So what happens? The torque of the load is greater than the induced torque. Okay. Due to which the motor will have to slow down. Okay. So due to this, what happens? The speed decreases. Okay. And let us see what happens when the speed decreases. Look at this equation here. When the speed decreases, the speed decreases, Ea is equal to K into phi into omega. So speed decreases, Ea decreases, all right? And let us see what happens after that. Now you see this particular equation here. We can convert this equation as Ia is equal to Vt minus Ea divided by Ra, okay? So what happens to Ia now? So Ia is equal to Vt minus Ea divided by Ra, okay? So here what has happened? Ea has reduced. So Ea has reduced. So this minus term is reducing. So when Ea reduces, this Ia should increase. Simple mathematics. When Ea reduces here, Ia has to increase. Now when Ia increases, what has happened? When Ia increases, look at this particular equation here. Torque induced. 
टॉर्क इंड्यूस्ड इज इक्वल टू के इंटू फाइव इंटू आई एफ इन दिस स्टेप आई ए हैज इंक्रीज सो आई ए इंक्रीजेस तो आई ए इंक्रीजेस मीन्स टॉर्क विल स्टार्ट इंक्रीजिंग सो हियर द लोड हैज डिमांडेड दिस मच टॉर्क नाउ द मशीन इज प्रोड्यूसिंग मोर टॉर्क बाई टेकिंग इन मोर करेंट ओके एंड टिल हाउ मच दिस विल कंटिन्यू दिस विल कंटिन्यू टिल दी टी लोड इक्वल्स दी इंड्यूस टॉर्क ओके आई शुड पुट इट द अदर वे अराउंड दिस विल कंटिन्यू टिल दी इंड्यूस टॉर्क बिकम्स इक्वल टू दी लोड टॉर्क एट द लोअर स्पीड एट द लोअर स्पीड so here the motor started to decelerate a little bit but it will settle down at a particular speed and at from that period onwards when t induced torque induced is equal to the load torque the motor will settle down a particular speed all right so i hope that is clear now now let us derive some simple equations to understand this concept in a much more better fashion in an engineer's perspective okay now you may ask me why do i need all these equations to support all the theory the reason is for I, i had told you already an intuitive understanding is that the torque the speed and the torque relation will be a drooping curve something like this but how fast it is dropping is it like this or is it like this or is it like this for this you to understand all these things you need proper equations all right so the only equation that we require here is vt is equal to ea plus iara it's already derived okay and you know that ea is equal to k phi omega from the emf Across the armature and torque is equal to tau is equal to tau induced is equal to k phi into i a simple equations. So let's substitute these equations, these simple equations into this particular equation here. So v t is equal to k phi into omega. So this value I'm substituting here and i a from this equation i a is equal to torque induced divided by k phi. Okay. So this is torque induced divided by k phi into r a. Okay, so you want a relation between omega and torque induced. So let us find out that. So what you get is that k phi omega will be equal to minus r a divided by k phi into torque induced. I am just doing a simple mathematical juggler here, just rearranging the terms. Now you want omega here alone. So let us divide by k phi throughout. So dividing by k phi throughout the equation, so you get omega is equal to minus r a divided by K phi the whole square into torque induced plus V T divided by K phi. Okay, so this is the equation that we want. This equation is very similar to this particular equation. Y is equal to m x plus c. Okay, minus m x plus c. So here this is your omega, and this is your x is your torque induced. Okay. so this is a very simple equation you can see that there is a constant term also here if the field current is constant the flux is constant vt is already the applied voltage and k is the constant of the machine so this is basically a constant machine all right now let us start understanding this equation a little bit more okay so if i plot this particular equation here what do i get if i plot torque induced and omega here So, if torque induced was zero, torque induced was zero, omega will be equal to Vt divided by K phi. So, your graph is going to start somewhere here, which is Vt by K phi, and this is a y is equal to minus m x plus c. Okay, so let's just delve into a little bit about of theory about what is this y is equal to minus m x plus c. It's a simple equation. All right. Okay, I have taken a simple example here. Y is equal to minus m x plus c. Y is equal to minus two x plus three. I have taken this equation. So let's just plot this graph and see. So when x equal to zero, y equal to six. When x equal to one, it will be six minus two, which is equal to four. And when x equal to two, it will be six minus four, and that is equal to two. All right. So if I plot this, what I would get zero, six. This is going to be the first point. Second point is one and four. This is the second point, and the third point is two and two. So this is the third point. So this is a drooping curve, curve like this. Sorry for that. It's a drooping curve. Okay, so a linear drooping curve. Now, if I just change the value to y is equal to, let me put y is equal to minus x plus six. Okay, now the slope I have taken as one. Here the slope was two. So let us see what we will get. So x y. 
quickly let us just do two or three points one and two so x is zero y is six so you see this is always going to start at this point here and when x is one y is five and when x is two y is four so x is one y is five somewhere here okay and x is two y is four somewhere here so the second graph would look like this so you can see the drooping has reduced now in case if I change y is equal to some minus 3x plus 6, I would get some kind of an equation like this. Okay, So this particular value, this minus 2, minus 3 or minus 1, which is m value, that shows us how much fast or slow the curve is going to drop. So let's use the same theory for this diagram here. So here minus ra divided by k phi square is going to determine how fast or slow your motor speed is going to reduce with respect to induced torque. So for example, let us just take this diagram here and it would be looking like this. So this might be the drooping curve. Okay. So minus ra by k phi square. Okay. Let me just put ra by k phi square actually. Minus sign is already there. So ra by k phi square would determine how fast or slow the curve drops. Okay, the curve drops. And Vt by K phi shows the initial value, shows the initial value, initial value, okay. Now in case Vt by K phi was more, it would start somewhere here and if still more, it would start from here, okay. So in case I can just put one more value, if this, this is Ra1 by K phi square, for Ra2 it would be a little bit reduced, it would be something like this, okay, it would be something like this. Now things are not very easy here. <laughs> now this is a basic linear drooping curve with torque induced and omega. Now an increase in torque induced means the armature current is increasing. Now when the armature current increases, what happens? When Ia increases, armature reaction increases. And when armature in reaction increases, you know that what are the effects? Flux weakening increases. Okay. And when flux weakening increases, you know that Ea is equal to k phi omega or I can put omega is proportional to Eb divided by phi. And when flux weakening increases, that means when the flux is reducing, okay, flux weakening means flux is reducing. When the flux reduces, the speed actually goes up. So when the torque induced increases due to the armature reaction, the curve may not follow this particular path here. It might follow for some, some extent here, but due to the armature reaction, the curve would actually shift like this, okay. So this is without armature reaction and this is with armature reaction. So this is an important point to note here. When the, with, because of the armature reaction, the flux weakening increases, which means the flux drops and because of that, with the increase in torque induced, actually it does not follow the same curve as the equation. It actually increases a little bit. All right. So I hope today's particular section session is clear to you. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.